Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Psalm 73. Yep. Says, for I was envious of the arrogant when I saw the prosperity of the, uh, of the wicked. So this is a very famous psalm um, talking about the envy toward the arrogant and the wicked. And it turns out if you actually look at the um, descriptions for these this person that they're envious of, um, he's not this like immoral person. It's actually he's arrogant because he has there his good reasons to be arrogant. Um, that this doesn't this person doesn't have to get rebuked by God's word every morning, as it says in verse fourteen. This is a person who can just, he's pretty much free, you know, he's successful, free, can do whatever he wants, whenever he wants, and that kind of a picture, right? So, mm -hmm. And there are people who are scoffing, threatening okay. oppression, um, their mouths um, speak against the heavens, um, their tongues strut through mm -hmm. the earth. A lot of speech issue here, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, then it says, his people turn back to follow to, to them and find no fault in them. So who is it, who is it that is following these? Yeah, they, so they have followers, first people. of all. You know, they have followers. And um, they can speak so arrogantly, and yet people don't find any fault in them because they're successful. They're good at what they're doing, I guess, right? So then, wow, when you d describe it that way, we do become envious of such people, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, they speak arrogantly because they, people look at them and go, wow, well, I mean, they can speak that way. That's fine. You know, so that's sort of the description here. Hmm. It says, behold, these are the wicked, always at ease. I'm not sure if that's actually true. Well, they at least appear to always be at ease. Mm -hmm. And from the outsider's perspective, it looks like they don't have any troubles. Or especially, well, how about this? If you're struggling, that person who seems to be the, who doesn't have to do any other things that you're doing, I guess, for, for God, seems to be he's always at ease even though you might even know better but i think that's that's actually very true to life of, of our experience when we're struggling mm. you know um but what's sobering to know is actually that uh it's not it doesn't have to be the non-christians that become the 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 reason why we're tempted to be envious like this mm. it's sometimes the christians who are not actually doing the work of god it's the christians who are going after the same thing that the world is going after, going after, basically describes the situation always at ease, increase in riches, um, you know, they strut around, um, they own a lot of things, and man, you, you just feel like, oh gosh, like I'm envious of them, but that's, if you just kind of take a step back for a moment, that's pretty crazy, right, that we want to be like them, mm -hmm. you know, when we say, oh, I want, why am I doing this, I want to be like that person, okay, so let's say you become like that person, Gosh, like, what does that mean? Like, that means you will become a person that other obedient, sacrificial Christians will look at and now be tempted to give up obeying God and say, okay, forget this, you know, I can be like that guy. I can be like you. Really, you know, do we really want to be Satan's tool, Satan's hands and feet to tempt other obedient Christians that way? You know, let's, let's together say anathema to that. Like, God forbid, may it never be. You know, so that's that's what I was thinking about this time around. So, mm -hmm. so when they thought how to understand it, it seemed wearisome, and mm -hmm. then they went to the sanctuary and discerned their end. And so, how is it? What is it about that that caused them to turn around? Um, yeah. It's just like Isaiah's rope illustration from yeah. the retreat. So something like this, you know, the rope illustration where this little tiny beginning, and this is infinite. But you, we think that everything has to happen right here. And this psalmist is saying, okay, I want to look at this point right here, this end of life, and then going forward. Mm -hmm. right? When we discern the end, and things become much more then clear. things become very clear. That's yes. that's basically the sanctuary of God when I discern mm -hmm. their end, and mm -hmm. that's the turning point for the psalm. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of the only way that the psalmist could have turned around, because if you're just looking at the outside of how they look now, um, within the four corners of this life, it's hard to think otherwise than the, why not live like that. I'd rather live like that. Mm -hmm. But um, by looking to their end, that's the only way that we can see that no, this isn't. It. This isn't all there is. And so I think that's why a time like we have now, even in COVID, is, um, could be a blessing. And as we think about the focus retreat, I wonder if there would be such um, hunger and such a responsiveness um, at a normal time. I think that part of 
that hunger comes from people being more um, mindful of the end. Yeah. And, you know, when we struggle, when I struggle with the temptation to take it easy, to settle down, uh, you know, really, this is very good advice to discern the end, to go into the sanctuary of God and discern the end, just to think about the end, you know, think about my end. How does this end? At the point of death, um, when I'm on my deathbed, about to meet God, and I know I'm about to, how am I feeling at that point? You know, mm. how am I thinking about my life and how I lived? Um, what I invested into, mm-hmm. man, like, yeah. So let's discern gonna... our end. Let's discern our end. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you we're know? not going to be regretful that we didn't get to buy that nicer house or that we didn't get to live a few more weekends of vacation or travel. Yeah, like, a few oh, man, I wonder if my, my bank account could be a little bit fuller. Mm-hmm. That we, wouldn't, we wouldn't be thinking that, right? So... And then, okay, so in the end, he says, Who am I in heaven but you? But there, And there is nothing on earth that I desire beside you. And I know that the process of struggling is hard, but it's all worth it to get to this point where we can say this. Whom have I in heaven but you? And there is none on earth that I desire besides you. Um, all of the anguish that we go through uh, to get to this kind of clarity it's all worth it. So just like we try to exhort our students through Focus Retreat, um, let's keep this in mind for ourselves and keep ourselves sharp that even if it feels like a slog, mm-hmm. um, we want to get to the point of this kind of clarity. Yeah. There is nothing on earth that I desire besides you. That's a really lofty thing because there are so many things on earth that we desire that we, we want to have. But again, like when we discern the end, then they become like phantoms. And I guess that's for a moment, you know, what when you're awake to reality, sort of like the Isaiah the example of the fetuses that come into real life, you end up really, yeah, then you start to kind of wean ourselves from all the silly things that we desire on earth mm-hmm. because we know that they, they will ultimately become like phantoms, like you wake up to reality and he goes, oh, that was nothing, you know. So. And so Jeff said, let's call it what it is. It's stupid not worth living for all right (laughs) that's it okay bye bye have a good day